Is there anything that you think the people need to know before I go? Um, I think what I'd want to do is rather encourage people, like you said, to experience something first before they have an opinion, you know. Have an open mind, you know. Don't fear experiencing things. Don't hesitate. Rather go and experience something before you have an opinion on it. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So, let me understand this, yeah. yeah. When it comes to, let's say, Islam, the worship through Muhammad, to the Creator. Okay. Christianity, Jesus to the Creator. Now, okay. Masowe. Okay. From who to the Creator? This church was originated from this country. I wanted to experience it for the first time. I spoke to so many friends that I have in this beautiful country, and most of them condemn the church. I really got curious, and I wanted to do my own research about this church. The first thing that I found, it's an African indigenous church that worships in an open space, which where I'm coming from, I've never seen anything like that. Who is the founder of the most popular and controversial church in Zimbabwe? Shoniwa Mutunyani. Born in Zimbabwe and died in Zambia. He is popularly known as Johane Masowe. And you know what that means? John of the Wilderness and John the Baptist. Masowe was a movement that was founded in the year 1930s. So to me, it's not a church. But a movie. But most of my friends were telling me that it's evil, it's more spiritual, and I know that when it comes to anything African, African thinks it's evil. So I had to disobey my friends for the first time and go experience the church on my own. <laughs> I don't know how many times I need to tell you all that traveling is the best university in the whole world. If I knew this earlier, I wouldn't have gone to the university. But yeah, it's okay. I'm having another degree along my journey. Today is Sunday. Let me tell you something. Along my journey, I found myself in South Africa. And when I found myself in South Africa, I saw a church in an open. They worship in an open spaces and I couldn't believe it because I'm coming from Ghana and I've never seen anything like that before. So when I got closer, I was told that this church was originated from Zimbabwe. And if I'm in Zimbabwe, you know how I always do it. I always travel to learn. So I'm here to learn. I'm just gonna immerse myself in whatever they do here. And I believe that I'm gonna educate myself and educate you too. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe and be part of this YouTube channel. My name is Water Maya. Come along with me. I am Maya. I hope you have not been waiting for me for so long. Uh, not, not even. I was looking forward to it. How are you, Maya? I'm good. Good to see you. Good to see you too. Finally. Yeah. Today is Sunday. It's a, your day to worship. Thank you. Okay, so as part of our doctrine, okay. if, uh, for as long as you're part of this church, you're required to put on this garment. Okay. And so I've made an effort to get you one. So let's get to it. Thank you. You have to help me put it on, of yeah? Of course, of course. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay, so this is the back and this is the front. Oh, okay. I can already see it looking good on you. Oh, wow. Oh. <laughs> Based on my research on the internet, I think this church is one of the most controversial churches in Zimbabwe. You know why I'm saying this? 
because this same church got most unanswered questions in Zimbabwe. And that indeed got me curious. It's a must to wear this clothes, right? Yes, for as long as you're part of the church. I, I, I saw one in Durban, South Africa. It okay. was white, but this one is blue. Yeah, we here at uh, John Masoich, Shano Velvet, okay. uh, we wear both. So some congregations also use both, some just stick to white. Okay. Yes. All right, good. So you, we're going to walk along our halves. Yeah, oh, there's yeah, more. Yeah, and this as well. So you just put this on top. Okay, so before we go, uh -huh. um, this is, I just want to tell you about uh, this particular place. Okay. So this is John Mama Sowechi Shanu Velvet, mm -hmm. uh, led by Mazibaba Owen. Can you say Mazibaba Owen? Mazibaba Owen. Yes. Okay. He's our prophet here. Alright. So welcome, and I hope you have a lovely time. Thank you. We can go and join the others. Thank you so much. And I went to the church myself to also get more answers to what my questions and i believe that this church is a secretive church so this is how we sit here okay. the men uh, sit on one side facing the women and the women sit on their side facing the men why is it so um that's just how we we make sure we we don't mix the genders so we separate the men from the women it's a it's sort of like a patriarchal church okay yeah but not not that bad, you know, because uh, nowadays, you know, when you when you say when you mention the word patriarchal, mm -hmm. people automatically think women are being suppressed. Oh, okay. So that's not the case. Yeah. Wow. But we just make sure that uh, women have their own duties that they follow, and men have their own duties that they they follow. So they got uh, both children to in here. Yeah, they here, so they sit in front. <laughs> Why do you worship in an open space? Okay, um, with regards to this um, uh, church, it, it started way back in 1931 and it sort of like took the roots of how the African people lived back then. So they did not do, uh, worship in, in indoors and all that. So what uh, happened is when the Holy Spirit uh, descended on, on Baba Joan, um, the idea was not to change, to completely change what people do, what the African people were doing, their practices and all that, mm. but rather um, shift a few things, you know, not, not a radical change, not changing everything at once, mm. but maybe slowly getting them to adapt to how they are supposed to do things, you know. For example, um, back then, people believed when someone dies, you know, their spirit comes back yeah. into the home, and then it, you know, yeah. uh, it, it lives within us. So he comes, uh, the Holy Spirit descends on him. He comes. He says, uh, the Holy Spirit, uh, God likes or is is uh, God appreciates yeah. how the African people are living. Yeah. But we want to teach them that heaven actually exists. So instead of uh, thinking that when you die, your spirit comes back home, um, we, we, we want people to believe that when you die, your spirit actually ascends to heaven, you know. So we sit here. Mm. Um, that's how it was always done in the, uh, back then. Okay. And so the idea is we're not changing that, you know. We came from the soil and we we'll sit on the soil and we'll go back to the soil. It's more like African spirituality then? It is, it is. Is it like an African spirituality that is modernized? It's... I don't want to call it that because then we're working with the Holy Spirit. Okay. With regards to this church here, what I can say is everything we do is led and guided by the Holy Spirit. Yeah, I don't know if you understand. No, of course. Yeah. Yeah, so it's different from African traditional uh, religion in so many ways because they uh, back then, for example, they believed if you want something, 
you go and pray under a tree or something like that yeah. and then you receive what you, you want and exactly. they actually did get what they wanted. Exactly. So now the Holy Spirit comes and says no, instead of doing that to going to a tree and, and, and praying for what you want, you can kneel down and pray to God and ask God for what you want. Mm. And now since we are led by the Holy Spirit here, mm -hmm. there's more like um, a direct communication between, you know, the, the people and the Holy Spirit. Because in these churches, every, every church, mm. you know, uh, within uh, the John Masoway Church has a prophet, you know. So I, I, I remember you asked me earlier on why there are so many, you know, churches okay. in different, so yeah. Um, usually what happens is it's a prophet and then people, you know, follow the Holy Spirit through that, that prophet, you know. Christians pray through Jesus, Muslims pray through Prophet Muhammad. What about Masoe? Um, okay, I'll say, let me say Baba Juan. You know, but we do no, we do believe in Christ. We do believe the Son. You know, but the reason why we mention Baba Juan a lot is because he brought the doctrine to us. You know, so whilst we pray, we recognize the Son, Christ, to the Creator. We also recognize that Baba Juan is a prophet sent to us by Christ. <laughs> worshipping Baba Joan, but it's recognizing that Baba Joan, you know, brought the do do uh, doctrine, doctrine to us. And then so we pray to Christ, to the Creator, yes, but not forgetting who? Baba Joan. Yeah. But some of the controversies that I read on the internet was why people are now allowed to join this church. You know why? Because the church was created specifically for African black people. So if you are a white person, you cannot join the church, but you can stand somewhere and watch them worship. I might be wrong. So if you are a member of Masowe Church, please answer me in the comment section because I want this video to be very engaging. So Baba Joan was not called Baba Joan before. Okay, so Joan is the Shona way of just saying his name. So his name is John. Yeah. Okay. So for example, my name is Kevin Takudza. Okay. Kevin or Takudza. Okay. So you can call me Baba Takudza or Baba Kevin. So let's say if I attend a, a church like this, yes. how are people going to call me? Is it like, uh, see, we, we have um, Pentecost. He's a Pentecostal. So when you attend a church like this, how are you being called? Okay, so we, you, you, go, you go to Masowe. Oh, you go to Masowe. Masowe, they call okay. it Masowe. Masowe. Yeah. All right. So we are Mapostori. He's a Mapostori, you understand? That's what they call him. Listen, when I came in here, I saw no musical instrument. But the voices that are joined together to sing to God. <laughs> Those voices are angelica. Oh my goodness. It, it, it beats the musical instrument that we've been using. They also don't believe in using the Bible as their main guide. You know why? Because when the white people colonized Africa and brought Christianity, they altered the Bible to suit them. That comes to my next question. So this African indigenous church, is it a Christianity church or not? So which means you follow the teachings of the Holy Spirit. Of the Holy Spirit. Wow. So we don't just open the Bible and, and, and just spread the word of the Bible or in the Bible, but rather we, everything we do, as I said before, is led by yeah. the Holy Spirit. You know where I'm coming from, the Holy Spirit can actually speak through someone. Okay. Does it happen here? That's I mean, exactly how it happens here. 
through our prophet. So we don't just get up, for example, and say, let's go to Mutari to worship with another church. The Holy Spirit sends us to Mutari to worship with another church for a reason. It's never just random. Yeah, so here it's not like um, the Bible said we have to do this and it's yes, always directed yes. by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. So which means he is a preacher. Okay, well, so we have a lot of, anyone can preach here. Can you preach? Yeah, I can. <laughs> so any, what do you anyone, mean? anyone can, if you feel oh, that you have something to say on that particular day, you're free to get up and preach, you know, wow. you sit down. If he wants to, because at the end of the day, it's about teaching one another how to live um, our day-to-day -day lives. So if you don't use the Bible as a guide, but rather use the Holy Spirit as a guide, I want to ask this question because I am confused. Does that make you a Christian? Please leave that as a comment and let me know. Yeah, we, we make reference to the Bible, but as you heard before, he was speaking about how Peter and the other disciples uh, moved around spreading the word of God, yeah. you know. So we do make reference to certain things in the Bible because they actually did happen. But what we do here on a daily basis is led by the Holy Spirit. One unique thing that I saw in this church is the fact that all the men in this church have cut their hair short. So which means I was not qualified to be in this church. We have visitors every now and then. I don't know if you noticed, but there are people wearing their clothes. Yeah, they, yeah. They are not, yeah, yeah. So they're not part of the church. So they just come here, they seek help from the prophet, and he does help them, you know. So for some of them, they, they don't, they're not part of the church yet, mm. because they don't understand certain things. And then some think the church is strict, you know. For example, we don't drink alcohol mm. yeah, at all. We don't drink alcohol. We don't eat pork, you know. So there are certain things we're not allowed do you, do you, to do. Do you smoke? No, we don't. It's not allowed. We, we, what we about the way of dressing? You you have to dress um, in a decent, decent way. Decent way. Yeah, in a decent way. And so some people see it as strict. For example, women can't plait their hair, so they they required to keep their hair short. So you know, women will come here and think, okay. I like how they, they praise and worship, but I don't think I'm ready to cut my hair and stop putting on makeup, you understand? So those are some of the barriers that are there between the, the people out there okay. and the church. I, I, want, I want to ask, when we were coming here, yes. I mean, my camera guy was wearing um, a long um, trousers. Or oh, jeans, okay. Yeah. Are we supposed to always wear shorts? Yeah, well, yeah. That's, we wear shorts here, so white t-shirts, and I don't know if you noticed, but most uh, we are wearing khaki shorts, okay. you know, so that's, that's what we wear. And then the women wear white t-shirts, and they're white or blue skirts, okay. so that's how we dress. Women need to cover up in the church. Women from this church are not supposed to have makeups on. Women in this church are not supposed to wear trousers. Now let me know what you've heard about them because I'm not here to judge them. This is what I saw and this is what I'm telling you. One of the challenges the church has faced over the years since 1931. So this guy Baba Joan comes and he, he claims to have um, been sent by the Holy Spirit, you know. And so some people believe and they follow. That's exactly how it happened with all the prophets in the Bible. You know, Jeremiah came, John the Baptist came. Some people decided to follow, some decided not to follow. You know, some people call them fake prophets. Some people call Jesus fake prophet, a, a, a fake prophet, sorry, you understand. So it faces, um, it has faced uh, some sort of resistance over the years. But uh, looking at the church today, I'd say it has massively grown, you know. The biggest thing that uh, Christianity is actually facing is offering. Okay. Do you guys give offering in here? We don't, we don't take offering, we don't give offering here. 
we are simply here to follow the Holy Spirit. Where the, the, the Holy Spirit sends us, we go. Mm. We, we are here to learn about how to, to live, you know, and help one another mm. go to heaven at the end of the day, you know. Um, if you face a problem, we are more than welcome to help. We help, we are there for one another, you know. If a, if family member, a close family member of, you, mm. of yours dies, we'll gladly go, you know, no matter how far it is. We are there for you, you know. Yeah, that we'll, is how it's we'll supposed take, to be. Yeah, we'll take money from our own pockets and uh, put it towards the cause, you know. I want to say um, thank you so much. And um, I'm educated right now, and I believe that anyone who watched this video who yeah. had a certain perception about this church, it's not what you think. That's what I'm going to say. Okay. And I'm so glad you took me through. Now nah, I just want to. I mean, grab my dancing shoes and then... But why is our feet on the ground? Well, we don't wear sho shoes here. It's a yeah. holy ground. It's a holy ground. We don't, we don't use shoes here. Fantastic. So you leave your shoes there. From a certain point, you don't wear shoes. Say this is one of the most beautiful days in my life. Uh, being here, I think I have heard so many things, but I'm just gonna tell you something, yeah? Sometimes you just have to experience something before you judge from afar. I mean, the love that I've, people in here have shown me, I, mean, I don't know if you guys saw when I wanted to take a photo. It was just myself. The next thing I saw, I mean, I saw people coming closer. This is the love that we need among ourselves. And this is the love that is missing in so many places that we find ourselves. I just want to let you know that, like, I'm inspired, man. Uh, even the melody itself, it's something that you won't hear it in so many places. This is. There are yeah, no it's drums. not something you get every day. No, no there, drums, there are no, no drums, instruments. no instrument. It's just voices joined together to worship the Lord, man. That's I'm, beautiful. I'm glad you've enjoyed yourself. That's so beautiful. <laughs> is, there, is there anything that you think the people need to know before I go? Um, I think what I'd want to do is rather encourage people, like you said, to experience something first before they have an opinion, you know. Have an open mind, you know, don't fear experiencing things, don't hesitate, rather go and experience something before you have an opinion on it. Apart from Zimbabwe, I saw Masowe in South Africa and Zambia. Let me know in the comment section, do you have Masowe in your country? I mean, I think my grandmother was Masowe. I, I need to ask my mom, but I don't know if the 12 apostles have the same doctrines with the people of Masowe. Yeah, my man,